Hello, my creative friends. I am Heather North. I am on Instagram at Heather's Creative Blessings. I'm a longtime blogger and YouTuber, but I took a long, long hiatus, like a couple years, two, two years, three years. I'll have to go back and look. Um, and I'm back. Typically, I have done paper crafting videos. On my blog, I have also shared um, some quilting and some other things. But here on YouTube, it's been primarily paper crafting. And today, I'm taking a lane swerve. I'm going to do a floss tube video. Now, if you are a longtime subscriber of mine, I will have a video up soon, if it's not already up already, that kind of tells you where I've been and what I've been doing. So you can kind of see what's been going on with me. But I will say that from here on out, if I continue doing videos, <laughs> that my floss tube videos will be labeled as floss tube and any other videos I do are going to be labeled so you know what it is. So you can just watch, pick and choose to watch what you want to watch. Um, I don't see myself doing any card making videos in the near future, but if I did, it would say card making. If I was doing a planner video, it would say planner. Um, which I might do because I've been kind of working on a few ideas with um, incorporating my creative stuff with the planner because life is just not normal right now and a normal planner isn't really working for me because it's 2020. <laughs> if you're watching this in real time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know if I'll do any other kind of videos, quilt videos, um, faith booking, faith journaling. I've thought about all of those things. I don't really have any plans to do those at the moment. But if I do, I'll go ahead and label it so you can, when you see my video pop up, you can instantly know, oh, this is something I want to see or uh, I'm not really into that. So that I'm not boring you with something you're totally not interested in. So this video should be labeled floss tube number one because it's my first floss tube. And then I might have a description afterwards. Um, I wanted to get this video up right now because, oh, I dropped my scissors. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know why this makes me nervous because I'm just basically talking to my iPad, but I'm a little nervous, I have to say. Um, in the past, and I'll get back to what I was saying, but in the past, my videos were just with my hands and I had the camera pointing down so you wouldn't have to see my face. And, even more importantly, so I wouldn't have to look at myself when I'm editing my videos or seeing my face again because, ugh, ugh, I hate that part. So I'm going to try and do my floss tube videos kind of all in one take, pretty much, and not have to do all the editing. That took a lot of time with my card making videos. Um, so this is more just a casual, I'm going to show you what I've been doing, what I plan on doing. Um, any finishes that I have and tips and tricks that I have and of course enabling showing you what I've been doing so I kind of forgot what I was saying before I went on my little side note that's something you'll see from me that's the problem with not editing you can't edit out your oh what was I saying <laughs> so anyways this is my floss tube video this is floss tube number one. Oh, I think what I was saying is I wanted to do this right now because it's in season we are um, a week and a half, two weeks away from, it's been, I think it's been, has it been two weeks? It's been a week, two weeks, two weeks since our presidential election here in the United States. Um, we're coming up on our, uh, Thanksgiving next week here. And so I wanted to show you what I've been working on because it kind of has to do with this time period in my cross stitch. And one of the things that I found for me personally is I really enjoy working in season or just a little bit before season. I wouldn't mind too much doing um, Christmas now, but um, one of the things I'll show you, my first whip I'll show you, you'll know why I haven't been working on fall very much. And so I'm kind of finishing out fall at least through Thanksgiving and then I'm gonna pick up some Christmas stuff and we'll talk about more about that in plans. But I do like stitching in season. I like making Christmas quilts for Christmas. Uh, the exception to that is in July because Christmas in July is kind of a thing. But when I do, like I did the um, oh, Fat Quarter Shop, it's jo Jelly Snowflake or Jolly Snowflake Quilt Along. And I did pink snowflakes and I did some mint green and, and uh, aqua blue. 
obviously I love those colors a lot and all of a sudden the sun has come out it has been raining all day and all of a sudden there's sun so I don't know what that's doing for my lighting and I forgot to turn my phone off so um yeah this is why I edit <laughs> and then things like that happen and I'm like what was I saying ah oh, people will never tune in to floss tube number two <laughs> Oh, what was I saying? Something about the season. Oh, my jelly snowflake or jolly snowflake or whatever it is. Um, I do colors that are a little off season. So in the, when I did um, Jolly July with um, cross stitching, I pulled out a lot of snow type stuff or, or different colors, um, maybe not completely Christmassy. Uh, so I can, I can, yeah. As we get to Christmas, it gets way more traditional. And so that's kind of just how I roll um, with all of my creative things. I've just discovered that from working on design teams and doing my own stuff that I really do. In fact, every year at Christmas, after Christmas, I will work on Christmas projects for at least two or three weeks, maybe all the way through January and get a head start on the next year. Because in August, it's really hard for me to make Christmas cards. You know, I want to be working on beach cards and fun things that are outdoorsy. And um, so that's just kind of how I roll. Um, with stitching, it is a little bit different with cross stitching because I'm not having to come up with the patterns. When you are a card maker, um, and I'm sorry, this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about card making because that's kind of where my um, past YouTube experience has been. Um, with card making, you have to come up with a design, especially if you're on a design team. It's kind of like people who make patterns. They have to, it has to be at least partly original, even if you're doing snowmen. I mean, everybody does snowmen, right? But it has to be your own pattern. And so when you're doing card making as a designer for different stamp companies, you got to have some original work. And so, um, yeah. So it's, it's really hard for me to do that out of season. If I'm following a pattern, I can do that. Um, I might change the colors a little bit, but I have fun playing with colors anyways. So I'm gonna go turn my phone off so that it stops making noise. Silent mode. Okay, now somebody please remind me to turn my phone off of silent when I'm done here. <laughs> okay, so I shared a little bit about me. I'm gonna have another video up about the season and why I'm doing this and and it's really interesting whether you've been a long time follower or you're a new follower um, you might want to check that out uh, especially if you find yourself in a creative slump that's what the other video is going to be a, a lot about and so um, <laughs> I was in seventh grade we took a trip up to Canada and um, my mom had two best friends they were the three amigos or three amigas because they're female and we I grew up with their kids. They were like second moms to me and we had all been very, very close. And one of them moved up to Canada with her family and she and her husband were going to Bible college up there. And so I got out of the country for the first time. We drove, we did a road trip with her other friend and her kids and we drove up there to see them. On the trip there, one of my mom's friends, um, Jenny was her name, she taught me how to cross stitch and Debbie did some more too um, when we got there and saw Debbie. And so that was my first experience. I made a cute little critter and I just loved it. I just, I really did. And I did some cross stitching off and on. I don't know that I did much in high school, um, but when I got married, I did do some cross stitching. I made little tea towels as gifts. I didn't make the tea towels. I cross stitched on the towels. Um, and I gave those as gifts. I made something for my mom. Um, I think it was a Paula Vaughn pattern for those of you old enough to know uh, Paula Vaughn. I loved her stuff. And, and it was a bride and her mom and frame that, give it to my mom. I made one I think for my mother-in-law as well. Not that one, but a different one. Um, and then when I had kids, I made the guardian angel that has this guardian angel with the two kids crossing the bridge. Love that one. I sold it at a yard sale when we moved up here. So stupid. But I sold it to somebody who really appreciated it and bought it for her grandchild. So it's all good. But um, I didn't really have many pieces of my own.
hence the blog, which I talked about in the other video. That's why I started a blog. It's to have a record of what I was doing. Um, and I think blogs, Instagram, uh, YouTube, things have evolved with social media. That's kind of how we can keep a good record of what we've been doing. So if you're not already um, using one of those, or if you're using one of those platforms, consider adding your own content, adding your own things so that you, other people can be inspired, but also so you can look back and see what you've done. So um, I did start another Polyvon. I'm pretty much a monogamous stitcher. I didn't know that was a name or a thing, but I tended to work on one thing at a time. And uh, so my oldest whip, I'm not showing it here today. <laughs> I'll show it in the future video. But my oldest whip is another Paula Vaughn pattern. And when we moved up here, so we moved up here 13 years ago, I did work on it some, but off and on. But I probably put it away for a good decade. And at that point, the only cross-stitching stores I had been to were those big box stores. So like Michael's or Joann's or... Um, we didn't even have Hobby Lobby down there where I lived. Um, what would be, oh, Walmart had a selection of, of floss and, and kits. And so there just wasn't a lot and I just didn't really fit my style. But when the pandemic hit and we were on lockdown, kind of, um, we still actually are, we're rolling back, we're hunkering down at home. Um, but also I've had some health issues, so I have really been hunkering down at home. Not thankfully the, the virus, but um, I've just had some, uh, I've had some issues. <laughs> and so, um, and ended up with surgery. So I, um, spending some time actually sewing was what started it. I was sewing and watching all the videos, all the different sewing things, and you know when you're watching YouTube, it starts pumping out the next thing and suggestions for you. And when I'm sewing, um, sometimes I'm really paying attention if I'm following their pattern, and but a lot of times I'll I'll watch it um, and kind of have it on in the background as I'm creating, and maybe I'm watching the same person again to kind of get whatever pattern it is I'm doing. Um, but I always can go back and watch it again if I need instruction. So, um, but I'm also sewing and the sewing machine's going and I'm up and down, up to the cutting table, up to the ironing board, sitting down at the sewing machine and back and forth. And so, um, it also just kind of keeps playing and plays and pops up the next thing. And I'll usually just watch whatever comes up next. And so one of them, I was watching the Fat Quarter Shop and the next thing that came up as a suggestion was one of Kimberly Jolly's um, floss tubes. And I was blown away, y'all. Blown away by the new things that had come out. And so I kind of kept a little thing here. Um, there's new fabrics. I had known of linen, but I hadn't really found linen at the store. What I had found was um, eight o'clock. And it was either white or, they called it cream, but it's more of a yellow cream than cream. And um, I knew people who coffee and tea dyed things to make them look older. So I don't know if I had seen them do that with cross stitch. Um, I had certainly not done it. But there's new fabrics. They're probably not new. They've probably been there. But my limited selection at um, at the time when I was really cross stitching was Joann's. And then when Walmart came in, Walmart had a little small section. That was it. So there's um, not only different fabric types. There's fabric colors. There's oh my gosh, different counts of fabric. People are dyeing their fabric, amazing colors. And if you stick around, I've got some to show you that I got in my most recent haul. And, um, oh, floss. Oh, there's silk threads, which I haven't even tried yet, but there are silk threads. And there's, they call it over dyed or fancy floss. Um, in the YouTube videos I watched, like I'm the expert, I'm not. <laughs> I've just discovered all of this since, you know, February, March, I'd say. Um, but these, these, let me see if I can find one. Um, the thread, the floss is variegated. And so it starts out as one color. And then as it goes through the strand, 
<laughs> it changes colors. It doesn't really change colors, but and I don't really know how they do it. Let me pull. I know there's one in here. Some of them are harder, like I said, some are harder to see than others. And I don't know how this is going to show up on the camera. But, let's see. I might have to do... Sorry, you guys. Like, I'm totally new. So, these are two different ones. But can you see the different colors in there? Isn't that cool? Let me grab... This driftwood here is like something else altogether. Sorry if there's a rustling paper noise. So, um, is this going to show up? I hope so. It's got like, oh, I can do it like this. It's got like brown to a dark navy blue. It's so, so, so incredible. And I had never seen anything like that. And I love tone on tone. I loved when I was doing watercolor um, and card making, I liked the um, variation in color to have deeper, darker spots and lighter spots. So you get the shadows and the highlights. And so I found that with the floss, this is a really cool thing. So that was something new to me. A floss tube, there's all kinds of floss tubes. You guys, if you're bored, if you're sitting at home going, I have watched every Netflix, Hulu, Hula, 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 <laughs> You've watched every show out there. You've re-watched all of your DVDs a million times. You are YouTubed out. Maybe find a new hobby and start looking, or a hobby you always done and haven't realized there's videos out there for it, and start watching them. So that was one of them. So... Like I said, Kimberly Jolly was probably, was my first. I'm, I'm like 99% sure that was my first one. And then I also knew, once I saw that and saw floss, floss, floss tube, I knew that one of my other paper crafting friends, one of, she was on a design team with me. Um, I think it's Mel's Craft Corner, I want to say. Um, but Melissa, I think it's Melissa Miller, had floss tubes. And if I have that right in my head if you've not I'll try and link her down below I, I'm gonna put a star here by um, gotta write myself a note or I'll forget I'll link her down below I was watching so I watched some of her videos and then Kimberly was talking about stitching with the, oh stitching with housewives I think was on with fat quarter shop or something and so that popped up and then of course Kimberly talks about them so I started watching Priscilla and Chelsea oh my goodness and then I just went from there, went nuts. Found Pam and Steph with Just Keep Stitching. Ah, oh, they are hysterical. Did I say Priscilla and Chelsea are stitching with Housewives? Because sometimes I call them Just Keep Stitching, but they're not. They're, they're, okay. <laughs> but Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching. It's a mother-daughter team. They are hilarious. I don't even know if they're mean to be hilarious. Um, half the time, but I have so much fun watching them. They have made this quarantine time a joy. I mean, not really, but really a joy. If I don't feel watch this, if you see this, mwah, thank you guys. Um, I hooked and I'm going back and watching their older uh, videos because, you know, I just discovered them this past spring. And there's several others, and I will mention them and link them as um, as we go through other floss tube videos because it's always fun to find somebody new. But I don't want to overwhelm everyone right at first, so I'll I'll try and link those. I think I mentioned four. I'll, I'll, I'll link those four people. So I used to be a monogamous stitcher. <laughs> I'm learning the terms. <laughs> Does that make me qualify? Probably not. Um, I'd stitch on one thing at a time and stitch on it until I was finished. Unless I had something come up where I needed to make like a baby, like I stitched on the, the afghan um, or a gift for somebody else, I would work on that alone, finish that and give it away and then I'd go back to the one I was working on. 
Well, it gets boring and I would put them away for months at a time because I was kind of bored with that project or I was struggling with a certain area and recounting it and pulling it out and recounting it and pulling it out. Recount you know what? You're going to time out. <laughs> that project is going to time out, but I was just doing one time. Well, guess what? You don't have to do that. I don't know why I thought I did, but you don't have to. And I do not. I, over the summer between Stitch Mania, it's a thing in May, um, and Jolly July, in July, I found a groove that worked so well for me. So well for me. I was loving it. I was able to work on things and get them done, uh, work on things a little bit at a time, get finishes probably every week or every other week I'd have a finish. And then I was also able to start something new because I had to find that balance between being overwhelmed by how many projects I had, sorry, being overwhelmed by how many projects I had and getting things done and accomplished. And so I found that groove. But then, thanks Pam is deaf, um, as well as like all of Instagram and um, Facebook. And you know when you start looking into things, they start popping up all over the place on your phone social media. Uh, there was this thing called Coming to America. It was by, it's Women of the Mayflower by Brenda Gervais and I think it's With Thy Needle and Thread and you know what? I'm going to have to look it up. I don't want to get that wrong. But I was watching, I, I'm again pretty sure, I was watching Pam and Steph on Just Keep Stitching and they were talking about this new thing that everybody was doing everybody and then they start talking about the pre-orders were coming in and they're getting ready to or the pre-orders were coming in soon and they were going to package everything up steph works for a needle workshop keepsakes see it's working if you are watching this it's working <laughs> she works for a local needle workshop and she was actually packaging things up so she and, and Pam is just a wealth of knowledge on history. And so they were talking about this chart. And in 1620, which is now 2020, complete eye roll. Uh, it's been 400 years since the Mayflower took off and then landed here in America. And I thought, what a neat thing to do that Brenda Gervais put together this stitch along. And I thought that was kind of a neat way to commemorate the 400 years um, and make something good out of 2020 because it shows they had hardship coming over here. They faced a lot of things. They faced some illness and, and death and disease um, and falling off the boat. Hello. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to be talking a lot more about coming to America in a future video. So I think I'll stop that right now. But um to me, I thought this would be a good thing to do for 2020 to just commemorate that time, the time that they spent and the time that has passed and what has come to pass through this. And because it was women of the Mayflower, you know, as women, uh, a lot of times we get overlooked in history and our place can get lost. And even though some of the names on the list of women who came over were lost, and so I just thought it was a really important, valuable thing. And something that I wanted to do was to take part in this stitch and share it with everybody else who was stitching because it's kind of a community bringing us together during a time apart. So my first whip, and this happens to be my first uh, project bag. Let me take some of this out. Um, you'll see I keep these in different ways and might do an organization video because I'm trying to find my way but this is my project bag here oh sees I followed a video and I changed the size and it's not quite the right size but you can see all those threads there's extras of some um, but I'm going to show you this whip and then I'm actually going to save the rest of what I was going to say for another video because this one's already getting long so let me, where did I put that piece of paper? You guys, you guys that are floss tubers, you make this look easy. So here is my coming to America. It's almost done, but this has made me a monogamous stitcher again. This has reminded me why I am no longer a monogamous stitcher. 
because whew, it's it. Okay, how do I move this up? How do you guys do this? I'm gonna have to pay more attention. You can see where I'm at. So I've got this down here to do, which will say Plymouth. And the very last thing I want to do is the rock, Plymouth Rock that she's standing on. You can see that there are some color changes on here, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to share more about that, like I said, in the next video. And, and in that video, I'm going to go ahead and link everything. I made a couple of chart changes, um, and I'll talk about that in the next video. It's just taken me a long time. And I got this idea to do this because, like I said, I was watching Pam and Steph and got all excited. And <laughs> uh, it's different than the style I have been doing since restarting um, cross-stitching. And because I've worked so, I was trying to get it done in 66 days. That was the goal. 60, hashtag 66 days of stitching. You can look it up. It's fine. Um, because that's when they first got to America. I didn't get there but here's the deal neither really did the women the women of the Mayflower did not disembark for another month and they didn't actually get to Plymouth Rock I think it was December oh I don't know uh, Google it <laughs> December 6th December 16th something like that um, so they didn't actually get onto land until December so I'm feeling a little bit better about that. Maybe it was November 16th where they hit. I don't know. I'm sorry you guys. Facts fly out of the head. Um, but that is my coming to America. Did I show you the back? I did do a little quilting. Love this. If by chance Rita Whalen is watching Rita, I got this fabric from you. Um, okay. So that's my coming to America. Oops, got to put this in here. I guess I'm moving on to whips. <laughs> oh, I did write notes, and I will have notes for a while. Um, so the, so I haven't gotten a lot of things done other than that. I have though in the past. Oh, math. I, let's say it's been, I'm trying to remember when I started stitching again, probably, let's see, did I have cross stitch with you my first, I think it was my second appointment with the surgeon, which would be March, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, so eight, nine months, um, I've been cross stitching again. And that's really not the style of what I do a lot of, but I do a couple of things. I, I actually do like history. I like having the connection to the past. If you look in my room behind me, this is my little office here. Uh, you can kind of see where my style more led. This is, this, I love this. I love these colors. I love the fonts that are in two different fonts. It, this is my happy place. So, um, I haven't gotten a lot of other things, but this is one of my newest starts. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in here, but this is, oh, sorry for the glare. I hope that works for you. Uh, I Love Fall by Cherry Hill Stitchery. And um, I downloaded it, obviously, I printed it, um, and I'm working off of there. And I changed a couple of colors. Okay. I just have a thing for color and I haven't been into a needlework shop yet so I have to order online and some things work and some things don't but this and you'll see I do have needle minders I don't have anything in any rate now that I'm aware of but this is I love fall I'm gonna pull out I'm gonna tell you the color changes on this one So let's see, it's on Sand Castle, Marbled Jobelin, I believe Jobelin, 28 count. I got it from Everything Cross Stitch, that's what it's stitched on. And then the color changes, I changed, um, I think it was 3865, it was one of the DMC to grits, and 
I added in rum raisin, so I'm substituting rum raisin in the I love in the words part um, for the I think it was Havana. It's the brown. I changed that to that deep purple, and then I changed out ivy for one of the other greens. I think because I didn't have the green that was called for. So this is my I love. Oh, the lighting's terrible. Let me grab. That's why, that's why people do this, right? Oh, it's a little bit better. And you know, the light keeps changing in this room. That's, that's better. B, okay. So you can see, um, the color is hard to see on here, but um, that's where I changed the rum raisin. And then the, I think it's the lighter green that's different is that ivy. But I like it, love it, love it. I love the marbling and the modeling in the fabric. Um, going forward, I can see myself using that almost exclusively because when I'm quilting, instead of just doing a solid color background, I love using tone on tone or marbles or marbles. <laughs> Marbled fabric. <laughs> I love using marbles because I lost most of my. Okay, so that's I love fall, most of all, and this will be something, Coming to America is almost done, oh yeah, um, this will be something I think I'll be able to finish uh, in November as well, and then I think, in case you're wondering, I'm looking for what fabric I stitched coming to America. It's Historic Beige Dyed Effect by Fabric Flare. It's 32 count. I have to tell you, I've gotten older since I last cross-stitched and my eyes don't work like they used to. I have to use a Halo Go lamp. The, it's a, a rechargeable light with a magnifier so you can look through the magnifier and have the light on there. I have to have the light. Um, like I said, I must be getting old. So the next thing I did, this, um, I'm not sure where I saw this first, although I know I have seen it on the Just Keep Stitching, but I've seen it elsewhere as well. And this is the Votes for Women. And this really spoke to me, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this video now before, um, before November is done. And I know the elections are done. But, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. I wonder if it's in here. Ooh, I may have to grab it. I may have to insert a picture. Maybe I'll insert a picture. Um, but there's a couple of things I've did, done this year um, with the voting. But this was especially um, special to me because women didn't get the vote in all 50 states until 1920. And, you know, uh, like I said, the women of the Mayflower really spoke to me. This really spoke to me, too, because... Um, my mom instilled in me that importance of voting and regardless of which way I'm not going to be political that's just not who I am if you know me in real life I rarely I just don't talk about it because it can be so divisive um, I am fine with talking about ideals but ideas and things but I don't plan on doing that here so regardless of who you voted for or who you're going to vote for I just think that people, and my mom taught me this, that men and women have sacrificed, they've fought, they've died for our freedoms here in America. And one of the big privileges and, and rights that we have here is to be able to vote, to have our voice heard, to not be ruled by a person, um, but to have some say so in, in how our lives are managed and and how we believe is the best way for all the people. So uh, as a woman, um, I've struggled with a lot of different things. And to me, I look up to these women who, who paved the way for the rest of us. And my mom told me that, I, I remember her taking me, she worked full time, she had to go after work, wait in line, but she took me and my brother with her and um, got the little I voted sticker. I remember seeing my teachers wear that. Um, 
it meant a lot. It meant something. And I knew what they had done. But my mom said, even if I'm tired, even if I don't feel passionate about the particular election I'm voting for, because not all of them are like this one. I mean, sometimes it's... She said, I do this because of the women who couldn't. And at the time, as a child, I thought, it's been forever. You know, 60 years they've been able to vote or whatever it was. Um, 50 years. To me, that was a life. That was like... People have been, women have been voting for a long time. Now that I'm no longer a little kid and I've had some decades under my belt, I realize, you know, even a hundred years, not that long, not that long that this happened. Um, my grandma was this, the women got the right to vote when one of my grandmas was just, um, I think six years old. And the other was 13 years old. No. Six years before they were born. 13 years before they were born. Uh, I should not be doing math this late in the day, I guess. Um, it's getting close to dinner time. Um, but anyways, um, it really hasn't been that long. It seems like a long time, but it really hasn't been that long. And it's so important that we fight for our rights and that we honor those who have paved the way and continue to pave the way. So this is Votes for Women. And I, uh, again, changed the color because you'll see in some of my older ones when I, in future videos, that I was doing what exactly what it was called for. But this is, um, let's see, Sandcastle. So it's the same one I just showed you for I Love Fall. I actually did started this one first. And um, I used a leftover scrap for that. And the colors I changed so far, green pastures, green pastures? I think I don't have green pastures yet. Uh, let me see, I'm sorry you guys. I'm gonna just pull them all out so you can kind of see. Oh no, I have green pastures. Green pastures is the change. So whatever it was calling for in the green is the one I didn't have. Um, and then I decided to change the colors of the women's dresses. And so um, you will see what happens there. I used purple haze, which I don't think is called for. But it might be. It might be. Let me look on the hair. Hold, please. Purple haze is called for. Green, pa yeah, green with envy. I don't have green with envy, and it was sold out. That's been the problem during this season, right? So I substituted green pastures, and this is purple haze. And like I said, I already have plans to change the dresses, so I have those in here as well. But this is the for women let's see votes for women and the two colors I've used so far so I did this during election week um, election day waiting for the votes to come in um, who knew here we are anyways I, I don't want to get political so oh lost my purple so votes for women and it does kind of fall into this fall season. I will continue to work on this. Um, I love it. I love it. I like the font. I like what it stands for. I like the fabric I'm working on and I'm enjoying changing some of the colors. Um, I changed some of the colors on my women of the Mayflower. So some of those you'll see in here as well, but that's my coming to America. No, this one is votes for women. Oh, this is by, if I didn't say the Nebby needle, and I believe it's Bonnie Wor w Woomer. Sorry. Sorry, Bonnie. I doubt you'll watch this, so it'll be okay. Um, and yeah, that's on 28 count. Love it. And I'm just going to show you this for posterity's sake. This is actually the bag I have it in. I think I got this. I know I got it for something other than cross stitch. I think I got it from someplace like Staples or Office Max way before the pandemic. Um, yeah, we're using it for something else and repurposed it. Don't worry, it's not COVID. <laughs> Anytime someone sneezes or coughs, it's like, it's COVID. And then I wanted to show you, this is something else I've been working on. 
This is, uh, it's called Mistletoe Lane. I'm gonna look up because I made changes in here. In case you wondered, and this will be a future video, I'm referencing my cross stitch journal from It's So Emma in the Fat Quarter Shop. So Mistletoe Lane number 15. Oh, and just so you know, since I started keeping track of projects, I have started 28 and I think I have half of those left to finish. So um, I think somewhere between 12 to 14 is a good number for me to have going at any one time and rotating and getting them finished. <clears throat> but like I said, I've been almost exclusive until we got the puppies. Oh, this is so long. I have to, ch I have to talk about it in a different video. But this is Mistletoe Lane. Um, it came in, I think it was one of those things, it was during Jolly July, so another hashtag, Jolly July, you can look up on Instagram. Um, I think that it came out in five piece parts as a mystery thing, and I bought the kit because, you know, again, I, this was in July, so I really didn't know what these colors, this might have been um, experience with the Fancy Floss and Overnight, that was in May, so this is in July. <clears throat> but... I didn't know the colors. I still only know the things that I bought or purchased. But this is on Overcast Lugana by Lori Holt. And it's 25 count. I'll turn it around. This is... <laughs> Isn't that cute? Okay, I might need this. So this is the pattern. And you can buy them now, it's just gonna be one thing. And then, so I print them out and I put, when I print out the patterns, I put them in the, the sleeve. I've got a binder full of all the patterns that I printed out um, and it kind of protects it. You can take it out and mark it up. I, I used to mark all of mine to keep track of my progress and I really should have on this one because this one should have been done a long time ago. But this stinking tree, I'm, you know this tree, the tree is lovely. The tree is perfect. It was charted correctly. Something about me cannot get this thing right. And I pulled it out and stitched it again and pulled it out and stitched it again. And I was doing outlines so I could just fill in. And so I would outline and come around the other side and I realized, oh, I'm off. And I took it all out. And then I went again. I was off again. Are you kidding me? So here is my progress so far. Let's see. Can you see that? Um, ooh, that was too close. So the first change that I made, um, I wanted it to look like a gingerbread. So I changed this to a gingerbread. Um, love how that turned out. And then I changed this to look more like, our house is kind of a gray, gray blues. And so I wanted it to look more like brick. I added in extra bricks. Um, and then afterwards I'm like, oh, one of the reasons I love this was because it had a pink house. Why didn't I do the pink house? But I still, I like it. Um, I changed the ornaments. We have a blue and white and silver Christmas tree. So, I mean, ornaments, that's our predominant color. So I went and changed to that. And as you can see, I've changed this. I changed the presents and I, I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do on that last one. So the only thing I have left in order to finish this is this present and this little tiny bit of the tree. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully this will be done before Christmas. And, um, I don't know. <laughs> I might make it into a pillow. It's kind of cute. But, um, so I used, I did use all of the called for colors, which you can find in the chart. And then for the house, I changed the, you know, the bricks. That part of the house is Lunar, uh, Classic Color Works, Lunar Eclipse. Plymouth Rock and Zach Black. All those are classic color works. And then for the roof, I did Weeks Dye Works, Cinnamon Twist, and Chris, it's like Chris apostrophe, like Chris's bonbon. Yep. And what I did with the roof, um, gosh, is this getting too long? I'm sorry. But just in case you're doing this and you're wondering, I picked out places so I did some darker ones. I didn't do as many, but I just 
picked and chose where I did some darker and then I did some like into the ones next to it. Does that make sense? So the darkest would be here and then I'd take it up and then I did the same thing with the threads going around. So that's how I did that. And then with the bricks, I alternated and I just charted in. You'll see I've got more bricks here because I just really liked that brick look. Um, yeah. I don't know if the bow has changed. I don't think so. Um, I'm pretty sure this is how it was charted. Although I saw other people do this differently. kind of wish I'd done that. Um, and I don't remember what color the star was. But like I said, I made that all blue and green. That's pretty cool. So that'll go with my feels like home. That was the Stitch Mania one. Feels like home. <laughs> I have that too. Uh-oh. There's a thread on the floor. Green pasture. Thank goodness we talked about green pasture because I know it goes into boats for one. I think they miss. This is in the bag that it came with. Okay. Sorry, you guys. I got to put this back where it goes or I will never find it again. So... Um, this is the thing that I've been working on in the morning uh, when I have puppy sitting. We have, we have, oh, I told you, another video. Another video. If you go to my Instagram page, you'll see a couple pictures of these puppies. They are 10, 11 months old, almost 11 months old. They are huskies. They are over 90 pounds. They're probably 100 by now. They were 95 uh, back in August. 95 pounds. And they're puppies. No control. You can't just leave them. It's like toddlers, but huge toddlers. <laughs> so um, that's something that I can stitch on and put it down. It's probably why I've messed up that tree so many times. Hmm. So for finishes, uh, I'm going to go. This is something I signed up for. I don't usually do um, subscription boxes, but... I started with that Sarah Cray uh, Let's Make Art watercolor boxes and loved them. And so I decided to give this a chance. My friend um, Mandy had done that, their first one, Stitch Quarterly, with, had the home. And I loved it. I loved the fabric. I, loved, I was like, oh, I really like that. And then I realized, well, even if I don't stitch what they're doing, um, you still get fabric. You still, I don't know. But So I, I got this. This is Hey Pumpkin. I found this on Etsy. I will try and link it. It doesn't necessarily go with this color, but isn't that a beautiful pumpkin? Oh my gosh, I just love it. So I found this on Etsy. Um, I'll try and remember. If I don't, leave me a comment. Say, Heather, where's the pumpkin magnet? This is a needle minder. This actually comes with a needle minder, but I just, I couldn't pass up on that pumpkin. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. This is Hey Pumpkin. So, what's, I'm going to... What Stitch Quarterly does is they give you a bag, they give you a pattern, they give you the, in the bag that coordinates, they give you the floss and the um, fabric, the cloth, and in this case it's a Lori Holt burlap, I think. And then, did I already say the floss? And a needle, and a little magnet. So this is the, whoops, upside down, needle case. Love, 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 love it. Um, and I actually put these on their new floss biddies. This did not come with it, but I'm still working on it. Actually, no, now I'm done, but I was still working on it. So I put them on the floss biddies. So this one is definitely a finish. And there's actually a video on, I don't know, one of the Fat Quarter Shop floss tube videos, I think. Or maybe it's their sewing channel. Um, so I might do what they did there. I might make it a pillow or a like a little mat oops upside down so this is on all the carl called for stuff i just used what it came with it see i was good used to be good <laughs> and so it is burlap vintage cloth by Lori holt it's 10 count it's very soft but it's also um very flimsy um, the holes are really big and i didn't know any better so i just did two over two and I really wish I had done three strands or four strands, but I did what I did. So here, where's that piece of paper? I need it stapled to my head, y'all. Can you see it? Let's 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I put that away in this bag. Because I know you're going to need it. <clears throat> I'm going to need it just to hold it up. Okay. Here we go. Whoop. Too close. Maybe? Isn't that precious? Love it. The color is not very true here. There we go. And my son is home. I might have to stop soon. But you can see, I mean, it's good enough coverage, but you know, not, not perfect, but it doesn't matter, right? <clears throat> so that is this one. And then my next finish, I've got more to show you in other videos, but my time is running out. My son is home from work, so it's time for me to start dinner for the family. And you're probably ready to move on to somebody other than me. <laughs> Okay, this is Let It Snow from Hands On Design. I'm going to show it to you and then I'll look. So this is the pattern and this is mine. And one of the things I did was I used the color, I don't know if it's the called, I think it is. I think it's Gassed Chalk and Tropical Ocean. And I went ahead and I combined the chalk and the tropical ocean to do this. And perhaps I also, there's something else, but now I can't remember. Hey. Um, I can't remember. But anyways, love this. And this is so quick and easy to do that this is something definitely worth picking up. And you can do it in January. It doesn't have to be. It's not Christmas specific. That's why I did it in Jolly July. Let me look up my handy dandy notebook. What did I just say it was called? Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. I apologize for sitting. Okay, January, a year in chalk. 2015. Uh, by Hands On Design. The designer is Kathy Haberman, I believe. And I did it on Ada, which help, which help, imports, 14 count chalkboard black. And I used the called for color. So it was um, Gentle Arts chalk and Gentle Arts tropical teal. So just two colors. Um, yeah, I like how it turned out. I really do. I really do. I really do. So now I thought I would share. See, you can't see me, right? You'll find out when I edit the video. I'm going to share just a little tiny bit of haul because um, I wanted to thank some people. So I mentioned Just Keep Stitching. And I mentioned that quarter shop. And I mentioned Stitching with the Housewives. And Stitching with the Housewives, um, they do a giveaway on most of their videos, I think. And this particular one... Um, I was watching their Disney video, one of their more recent ones, the Disney video, and I heard my name, like, I heard my name, I heard my name, I don't even know what I want, but it's <laughs> So I got this package from them, and um, it was, the Fat Quarter Shop had sent them some things. So thank you, Kimberly, and the Fat Quarter Shop, not that you're watching my video, but if you were, thank you so much for supporting other YouTubers and other creative um floss tubers and quilters and um, having them share the love because I don't think they do giveaways on their channel but they do give things away for other people and I won I won so it's I call it the prim collection it is prim stitch series number four kindness and generosity and this is by um, Lori Holt be in my bonnet so that's one and then I got the quilting book and I just happened to be a quilter and a cross stitcher. So very excited. Um, I think I'd like to do uh, one of these uh, flowers into a little wall hanging. I don't want to show anything I'm not supposed to. Let's but look, look how pretty that is. Is a cornerstone. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very excited. I got that. And then these are the floss bitties. I think you saw that in one of the 
one of my bags here. And then this, these are little magnets and they fit on your scissors and I don't quite know how to open this package, but they say paper, fabric, and thread. Isn't that perfect? So if you have people in your family like I have in mine that want to steal your scissors, this is great. But I'm thinking I could also use it as a bit of a needle binder. So um, I'm going to try that out. And then since we're on the Fat Quarter Shop, I got into their floss fix. I'm sure you guys have already seen this because it's been, it was delivered I think last week. Um, but this is the November 2020 Club. Somebody dropped out or they got some extra in and so I was able to join. So this is I think my second floss fix, which for somebody who, who is just getting into overdyed and fancy floss, love it. So these are the colors. And that was exciting. And then another, I'm so easily enabled. So before I made my coming to America bag, I did see on Instagram dot dot goose designs. Um, she was talking about, that was one of the other people that was talking about the special project bag she was doing for a special stitch along. And I'm like, I don't know anything about this. Totally missed out on her Mayflower one. That's why I made one for myself. But I did see her videos and she had, Ooh, this will make it easy to link it. Thank you. Dot dot goose designs. So this bag, I got this bag with the little thingy in it. So this, this got the little, I think she called them little chickadees. Aren't they precious with the snow? She's got a very nice label. It's very well made, easy to pull, zipper pull. Very pretty. And like I said, we do a lot of blue at Christmas. So, um, when I start putting together more of my Christmas project, this will go in here. And then this is, Oh, I think it's a thread keep, so you can see the little chickadee on the back, and the front has a little heart, and the pine cones, and then inside, this is felt. Um, you can put your needle in this, and then kind of keep your stray threads in there, and then this has a little loop. I don't know what that's for. Um, maybe your scissors? I don't know. I'll have to go watch her video again. Sorry. <laughs> is it Denise? Is that her name? Dot Dot Goose? And let's see. It is Denise. <laughs> and I think it's her daughter's work with her. Um, so yeah, this is one of my haul. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then the last haul I'm gonna show. Promise. This is thanks to Pam and Stuff again. Y'all, little disclaimer. If you decide to start watching Flosstube, you are going to be enabled. <laughs> so this is from Be Stitch Me. She has, um, her name is Brandy, Brandy Prather, and she has what she calls Friday Night Fight Night. She also has a Fabric of the Month. So Friday Night Fight Night, it's not every Friday night, but she has a schedule when she does it um, on YouTube. Okay, I'm going to sit down so I can see you. On YouTube, she has this Friday Night Fight Night, and she'll post different albums with the different um, cloths, as well as the counts. So she'll have linen, she might have Ada 18 count, Ada 20 count, Lugana, uh, I don't know all of them, but she has the album separated by that. And then she will post pictures of each of her fabrics. And there's only one, and the first person to comment gets it. Now, sometimes people go in and they comment on everything, and then they're like, oh, I was first on everything. I don't, can't afford everything. <laughs> and so they'll take it off and then they'll, oh, they'll pass it on to the next person. Or sometimes they'll accidentally claim something not realizing it's not the size or the count that they want. So anyways, I don't always win, but I have won a couple of times. So part of this, it, it might be fabric of the month. Or that might have been discount. I don't think this was the fabric of the month. Okay, I take it back. This is not fabric of the month. Well, it is. Girl. <laughs> I signed up with her fabric of the month. It's a different one each month. And she has, I think it's a neutral and a colors or a mixed. And so what I signed up for is the mixed. And I think what I got was the colorful one, which I love. I think it's called Escape. And of course I don't have it here with me. If you want to see it, leave a comment, show me Escape. <laughs> 
escape. Uh, but I saw somebody else post um, or share their Scotsman. Oh, and lots of people shared, but one person did on a floss tube and I was like, so I messaged Brandy, I had won the Fright Night, I had won a color with a Fight Night, um, and I said, do you have any of that Scotsman left over that I can special order? And she did. So this is Scotsman, and it's not going to show up here. I'm debating whether to pull it out, because I guess that noise makes it irritating. I'm sorry if it's irritating. I'll try to do it fast. I'll never get it back in this package, though, you know. So it says 32 count, but it's not supposed to be 32 count. So I think that the label is wrong on it. But, um, and this is showing up as more blue, more midnight blue. But the true color, this is closer. And you can see from my room, it's, it's a very deep teal color. And it does have that modeling and the marbling. Love it. You can use, you can choose either side. Oh. So I think I, I think it might be like a 16 or an 18 count Ada I went for. Uh, whatever it was, it was a person I had seen show it on their YouTube video. So I wanted it to look like hers. So I chose the count that she had. Because dyes take um, different depending on what fabric you use. So I really like Even Weave. I really love Luvana, but it comes out a little bit lighter. And I really wanted that dark. I want to do some Christmas snow, um, snow patterns. So the other one, this has no name. So this is a Friday night fight night thing. Yep. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It kind of reminds me of Escape, though but not quite. So this, you can see that's how she labels it. So you've got blues and it's showing up. It's definitely a raspberry pink up to purple. And then you can see the back. It looks like a starburst, huh? So, yeah, isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, love it, love it. And so sometimes, because I put my name down, if I'm not the first, I'm like, me please, or next please, or something like that. So this is one of the ones, and then I get an invoice and I don't even know what it is I've won. Like, I'm paying it because her things are incredible. I have not been disappointed yet. Love, 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 love it. But sometimes I do get pleasantly surprised. And I know I could look it up and figure out which one it was, but I like the surprise. Because <laughs> I already know it's something I wanted or I wouldn't have clicked on it. So this one is also without a color. Now the other thing Brandy does is she does giveaways. I think she does it every week. She definitely does it on her Friday night fight night weeks. So if you've ordered in the past week, you can claim certain prizes and then she draws names from there. So this is something that was a prize and it is not showing up. Let me see. Oh, It's a very light opalescent purple color. Let me try if I fold it in half. It, it reads more solid that color is nowhere near what it is. I am so sorry, you guys. Um, let me try. I hope the white paper will help. Not really. But yeah, it's not showing up, I'm sorry. But you can see the sparkle in it. And it's definitely a lilac, light purple. It looks kind of a gray in the picture there. Let me try it on this. Um, a little bit better. Yeah, it's just not gonna show up, sorry. But this I won, and I think it's actually an Ada as well. Yeah, it's actually a 14 count Ada, which I don't stitch on very much, 
but there are some things that this works really well for. And um, <laughs> it was lilac. I had to get it. So sorry I didn't show up very well. All right, I am almost done. So what's coming up next? What do I want to work on next? Well, I want to finish Coming to America, and I'm going to do a video just on Coming to America because there's so much I learned through this process, and I just kind of want to document it for myself, but also share with you. I want to encourage you, if you're working on Coming to America, Women of the Mayflower by Brenda Gervais, if you haven't finished it yet, if you didn't finish it in time, it's okay. The women still have not gotten off the boat. We're good. <laughs> I had to reach down. Sorry. I'm also going to work on the I Love Fall, most of all. And I have, you know what, it's getting long. Maybe I should just wait and share this at a different time. Um, I've got a project. It's kind of a Christmassy project that only has a little bit left to do. I just need to do the snow bank down here and it'll be finished. So I'd like to get that done before I start with the Jolly Housewives. I'm gonna be participating in that. Um, so I've got some plans for that. I've started ordering what I need. I'm looking because somebody else might come home soon. Um, my husband might be on his way home. <clears throat> I want to share this because this, I think it's okay to share the chart too because it's free on their blog. but. Um, this is Stitching with the Housewives just came out with uh, Thankful. It's a freebie. So if you're looking for something to stitch, it says, We are so thankful for this amazing community. We feel blessed each day to be a part of it. We'd love for you to stitch this for someone who you are thankful for in your life. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, of our hearts. Priscilla and Chelsea. So, um, it's not on here, but I will look it up, their, their blog. So you can get this chart. I think I'm going to start that on Thanksgiving, which, like I said, is next week. I have... I don't think that's supposed to be done, so I'm going to put that in there. This is the other way I like to keep my bags. These are from Amazon. So this is Beach House. I believe I have done all of the called-for colors. Um believe I have. I'm going to show this because this is so close to being done and I don't know if I'll do another regular video until I do my planning for um, Jolly July. But this is almost done you guys. And here you can see I've got a needle minder. I love, 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 love this one. Love this. So this is what I worked on a lot over the summer. I worked on it a lot at different doctor visits. Um, kept me company, but also encouraged and blessed me. I think I changed the center of the starfish to be the lighter sand color, but I'm pretty sure I used what was in there. And this video is getting long, so I'm just going to leave it at that instead of going into more. I've got a couple of other fall things I may start, I may not. I definitely want to finish, like I said, coming to America is top priority, finishing that, finishing Mistletoe Lane, finishing all dolled up. I don't think I told you what that first Christmassy one was. <clears throat> yep, that's all dolled up. There we go. And then I'll keep working on all my whips and share with you my next video. Thank you guys so much for taking time to listen to me. My throat is sore, so I'm sure your ears are sore. I hope that you have found something to bless, encourage, and inspire you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to know if you are a cross-stitcher um, or a creator, crafter in general, if you like to craft and create in season, like in the season we're in, if you like to be a season ahead or if it doesn't matter to you at all. So that's my question for you. I mean, how do you like to stitch? I will see you guys in my next Floss 2 video or on Instagram, probably even before that. Hope you guys have a blessed day. Bye-bye.